Yeah, buddy. As Joe would say from Joe's Neon, uh, it's time to answer some questions and uh, we're going to get started with uh, story time with Gonzo. I'm going to do it on Thursdays instead of on Sundays, like I said, because Sundays I'm busy. Uh, if I'm off, I'm either playing softball or fishing or something, and I might end up making a fishing video on weekends. So it's easier if I do this on Thursdays, which uh, I'll be doing from now on. So let's get started. I'm going to try and keep it under 15 minutes. Sit back, crack a beer, boss man, Coors Light, uh, Joe, I know you want your PBR, and kids and everybody else, grab a pop, grab your choice of beverage, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Give me comments, give me ideas, and I'll let you know anything that you want about me, except my social security number and my bank accounts. Uh, first question, real big dog. He wants to know, do I ever take my wife when I go fishing or trapping? Take her fishing all the time. Every chance that we get to go and my son doesn't go, uh, she's in the boat with me, she's on the dock, she's on shore, uh, it doesn't matter, she, she loves to fish. She's learning and she's learning quick. Trapping, absolutely not. She hates to see animals uh, in a trap, just like a lot of other people, you know, but uh, when I bring them home, she doesn't mind looking at them, she just doesn't want to see the carcass after their skin. So, hope that answers your question. Thank you. Sean and Andrea, have I checked out your channel? Yes, I did. I was uh, subscribed to it. I lost a bunch of YouTube channels. I don't know how, but I'm getting them back one at a time. I missed two of your videos. I went back, I watched them both, I resubscribed, and I commented on both of them. Everybody that uh, comments on my channel, watches my videos, I go back and make sure that I watch your videos and I comment on every one of them. Um, MN Trapper 101, how did I get the name Gonzo? Did I make it up or did somebody give it to me? Um, it was given to me. Uh, my last name is Ganyan. They started calling me Gonzo, play a lot of softball, hit a lot of home runs. And you know, it's just like that one's gone, that one's Gonzo. Or maybe I'm out drinking and you know I get drunk and I did so oh, I'm gonzo you know so uh and then if I'm in the bar you know my buddies it's always like well I'm going home no I just have one more so I just started leaving I wouldn't even tell them I was going to leave and they just started calling it a gonzo oh he took off he's gone they'd see me the next day or a week later and say oh you pulled a gonzo on us do it all the time uh Rocky Bird Dog do I get out for smelt up here I haven't much in the past years but I did this spring I dipped two smelt at the mouth of the Big Prescott River, and I got more lake shiners than smelt. If you go up into Wisconsin, in Ashland, Shaquamagon Bay, uh, they use stain nets up there, they get them by the buckets full. They're not around here like they used to be, and if they are, I just can't find them. Backyard meat, can I eat shellfish, or does it get to me? Uh, no, I can't eat shellfish, just like the poultry, just like uh, fish, anything else. Uh, Hopefully I'm going to be starting a series of shots here in the next couple months and I get immune to them and I'll be eating fish, poultry and everything and all that good stuff in the next couple of years. Abe, Abe Dredger, how much did my boat cost? Uh, I got a good deal on it, got it from a friend, cost me $50, I uh, couldn't complain. Gets me off the shore, gets me out in the water and it's a great boat, uh, just a little 12 foot aluminum and it really gets the job done. So I hope that answered your questions, guys. Uh, I hope we get more questions from you fellas. I'd like to answer six to eight a week, you know, questions, keep them coming and stuff. Uh, so uh, let's get started with story time with Gonzo. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, I want to go back to my last video when I talked about allergies. Um, I want to tell you about my last allergic reaction. Me and a guy from work were walking the fence, checking the perimeter, and there's this little uh, hornet. He's hovering around me, these little like yellow and black ones, and I'd swap at, swipe at him, and he'd just move, move, move. And I went to talk to my buddy, and I watched him fly right into my mouth, down into my throat. I don't know if he stung me, or if it was just an allergy from like a little bit of poison or the stinger on or something got caught in my throat, my esophagus, and immediately I could feel, I just started having that uh, reaction. By the time I got done locking the fence, 10 minutes later, um, I went directly to healthcare, the nurse seen me, her eyes just, you know, got like the size of golf balls and she's like, what's wrong? I couldn't talk. So she's like, you have to go to the ER now. 
So they got another guy, drove me to the hospital, which is 35 miles away. Uh, they were expecting me. As soon as I got there, they put two IVs, one in each hand, um, tops, and they shot one steroid in, and they shot a, um, an adrenaline in. And within five to 10 minutes, it reversed the reaction, and the swelling was coming down. But on the way to the hospital, my face was so red and puffed up, it felt like it was gonna explode. You would've took a pin, you could've popped it. And then uh, a little while later, they wanted to give me some pills. I'm like, I can't swallow this yet. So the lady's like, well, I'll give you a shot of liquid Benadryl. You know, do you have a driver? I'm like, yeah, he's in the um, waiting room. Well, I said, I'll be fine anyway. She says, no, you won't, not after this stuff. She shot me up with this liquid Benadryl and within seconds, I was on top of the world. Wow. You know, that was, uh, that was something else. I mean, that was, what a great feeling. Not something I'd want to take every day, trust me. So that's my last allergic reaction. Hopefully uh, I'm going to get through this and move on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a couple funny stories. When I was a kid, uh, me and one of my buddies, the railroad tracks used to run through Marinesco. And we were down, uh, we probably shouldn't have been doing this, we were tagging the trains and we had a blue spray paint can. So. You know, we're spraying on whatever kind of designs we wanted to and stuff. And um, I threw the can on the ground. I picked up one of these, and I had this bright idea that I'm going to smash it. Well, I put the corner of this into the can. The can decided it was going to explode, and I wore glasses back then. Blue spray paint covered my face. I looked like a freaking Smurf. My glasses were solid blue. I had these big brown frame glasses, uglier than a mother, you know, what word I'm saying. And uh, I was scared shitless. So right to my buddy's house we went. I tried washing my hair, cleaning my glasses off. All I like to think of how, is how much trouble I was going to be in from my mom and dad. Uh, well, I got the lenses cleaned off pretty good. And um, they weren't that mad. They were more pissed off about uh, tagging the trains because my best friend, uh, his dad was a cop at the time. My hair was all blue, so I had to get a haircut, pretty much shaved right off. Um, and I had blue frame glasses until I got new glasses. And I don't know if that was six months or a year later. We didn't have money just to go right out and get myself a pair of glasses and stuff. So what a horrible uh, trick joke gone bad on my part. Wow. So don't mess around with spray paint. Don't take stuff. Uh, just I, play your Xbox or something. Go fishing. And uh, that's that. Um, I want to tell you about my first weasel catch. Uh, I had two traps. I had a, a size zero Victor and I had a one and a half Victor that I got from my older cousin. <clears throat> and I went out uh, trapping weasels. And one of the older guys that I knew told me to use uh, apple and peanut butter. So I set my traps, it was a double set, and I went and I put an apple on a stick and, pe and peanut butter behind the trap. Well, I come back the next day only to have a flying squirrel um, caught in the trap and it was dead. The next day I checked my traps, I had a snowshoe rabbit in the trap and I brought that home and my cousin had killed it and we skinned it and uh, um, gutted it out and ate it. So I was, I was happy with that. A few days went by, never caught anything. And somebody told me I need blood and guts from the trap. So winter time, we got a lot of rotten apples in our apple tree. Um, I took my old Daisy BB gun, went to the front of the house, shot myself a cedar wax wing, went back to my traps, ripped the bird apart, threw feathers, guts, uh, the meat around and stuff. I had no idea that there was weasels around. Um, it was just a little chunk of woods in the middle of town. There's a little swamp there. I had my trap set right next to this great big hemlock tree. Uh, about the third day it was there, I would caught one of the biggest weasels that I ever caught. It was dead when I got there. I had it in both traps. I had the little zero victor, it was caught by the back leg. And the number one and a half, it was caught right by the head. So he was dead. Um, I was excited. I was pumped up. I couldn't wait to get him out of the trap and get him home and show my mom and dad, you know, my prized possession. And that's something that I'll remember forever because every time I go down the back street in Marinesco, I look at that hemlock tree and it's just a memory that is just edged 
you know, inside of my head. And I'll never forget the feeling of my first weasel. It was just, it was freaking phenomenal. I was on top of this world. I was six or seven years old. I wasn't very old. It was uh, my first year that I was in the trapping. <clears throat> and then after that, uh, you know, things got better and stuff. And I'm not a great trapper by any means, but I, I catch uh, plenty of other animals and stuff, you know, but it's that first catch, my first prize possession that I'll always remember. So, and I'm sure that lots of you guys, Boss Man, uh, Rodney, um, William, I'm sure you guys remember your first uh, prize possession catch too. So, uh, um, I told, I want to tell you about uh, my basketball. Uh, back when I was in high school, when I was in elementary, uh, I had this old rim, I didn't have a backboard, I'd stuck it on the uh, power pole out behind our garage. And I would shoot all day, I would shoot all night underneath the street light and stuff. And um, all I did is practice, practice, practice. And as I got a little bit older and I could shoot out a little bit further, I practiced my free throws. And uh, one day I wanted to be the um, state of Michigan free throw champion. And uh, that's what these trophies are behind me. I'll show you real quick, uh, it was 1985. Um, I won, we shot 25 free throws. And the first time I shot, I ended up making 17 out of 25 to qualify. And the next time I shot, I went to Gaylord, Michigan. No, I went, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was Gaylord, Michigan. And I made 23 out of 25. And for a tiebreaker, with everybody shooting down in Detroit, I had shot 15 more free throws. And I made 14 out of 15. So qualifying, I made 16, um, then I made 23 out of 25, then I made 14 out of 25. I was supposed to go to New York to represent the state of Michigan, and the guy that was setting up everything through the Elks, Elks Hoop Shoot Contest out of Ironwood, Michigan, um, screwed me over. I called him every week, you know, did you hear anything yet? No. Did you hear anything yet? No. And uh, he had a son my age. My guess is, and everybody else's guess is, um, I didn't call him one week, and then I called him like two weeks later, and he says, oh, you should have called me last week. It was last week, it's too late, you can't go. Well, my guess is that he sent his son down there to represent the state of Michigan, and not me. So let me give you a shot of these trophies real quick. And as I'm shooting this, I'm gonna tell you another little story. Um, right there, uh, that medallion, right there, that was my qualifying. That one right there is, uh, I, that was like the regional champion. And then this one, if you look at it, you can see free throw state champion. And I never got to go to New York, like I, like I said, like I wanted to. Well, I'm gonna show you something else. I made the USA today. If you look at the top left, you'll see where it says USA today. And then if you look right down there, Heath Gagne and Marinesco scored a school record 45 points. Milltowners, we won that game 105 to 80. And uh, that's a game I'll always remember. That was probably one of the best basketball games I'd ever played in my whole life. I, uh, I was 16 for 16 at the free throw line. I was five for five three-pointers and I was seven for eight two-pointers. It was just a game that no matter where I threw the ball up at, it went in, I made it, and it was just a, it was an honor. I didn't know that I made the USA today. My dad's neighbor uh, had come over one Sunday morning and he's like, hey, you made the USA today? And I'm like, really? You know, about what? And he told me it was in there, and I'm like, no. Nah. He goes, yeah, he goes, I'll go home and get the paper and bring it down. And if it wasn't for uh, Timmy McLeod, and I thank you, Timmy, if you ever watch these videos, um, he brought it to my attention and he cut the article out and gave it to me. I mean, that's just something I'll remember forever, you know, and I thought that was just such an honor to be in the USA today because that's like worldwide, you know, national news and stuff. So uh, that's a little part of my basketball career. Um, I want to talk about a muskie that I caught then. Uh, I'd caught a 50 and a half inch muskie two years ago. And I sent the picture to Muskie Hunter magazine. The guy emailed me back, says, yeah, we'll put it in the magazine, but it's, uh, you're on a two to two and a half year waiting list. 
whatever, you know, when it gets in there, you know, just buy the musky hunt there at the local store. I'll check every now and then, and once it's in there, I'll buy the magazine. Well, this guy, because of the name of the lake that I caught it out of, um, the editor of the magazine recognized the lake, so he goes, and he emailed me and told me he popped up the fish. Well, a lot of you might not know this, that muskies, um, their markings are like fingerprints on a human. None of them are the same. And he wanted to do a story on me. He told me that his buddy that he was fishing with five years earlier had caught the same exact fish when it was 46 and a half inches. So in five years, it grew almost five inches. The fish was 35 pounds. Um, I released it unharmed. My son was with me. He wanted me to keep it. And I said, no. He's like, Dad, you got to keep this fish. It's a trophy. I want you to mount it. I'm like, not at all. It was an honor catching this fish. I believe in catch and release. I can always get a replica made, which I'm going to do with the brook trout that I caught. Um, I, uh, I released the fish. Uh, I, I never heard if it was caught again or whatever. But the guy did an article on us, and I want to show you. Um, here's the magazine. It was in uh, uh, December 2011, January 2012. If you go to page 16, if anybody ever sees this magazine, right there it is, Big Muskie Caught Twice from Tiny Michigan Lake. And right there you can see Mike Roberts holding the muskie, and then you can see me holding the muskie in the bottom picture. Well, I hope you guys could see that anyways. I don't know if the camera's uh, on it good enough or not. But when he emailed me back the pictures of the muskie, he emailed the pictures of Mike on top and me on the bottom, and he circled all four markings on that fish that were identical to mine. The fish was just bigger. And catch and release pays off, guys. It really does. You catch fish, especially if they're big ones, they're spawners, release them, and hopefully somebody else will catch them. Uh, I caught a 40 inch northern last year, actually 39 and a half, and it was 20 pounds. Uh, it might have been 22 pounds. And the guy that I was with uh, didn't want me to release it. He's like, you gotta keep that, that's a hot. I'm like, absolutely not. I said, we got it on video, that's all I need. So if you guys go to my YouTube page and check it out, um, it's under like 39 and a half inch pike. And you'll see the whole video of me catching the fish, releasing the fish, and uh, what a feeling that was. That was just, it was phenomenal. It was just a great feeling. So. Uh, uh, like I was saying, you know, throw me some comments, give me some questions, I'll answer them. I'll load story time with Gonzo every Thursday, and uh, and um, and we'll see how this takes off. As long as everybody's interested in it, and I can get a couple hundred views a week, I'll keep doing it. But if the views um, fall off, I'm not going to do it. If nobody's interested in listening to like little bits and pieces of my life, it just it doesn't pay to load this, but I'm going to enjoy doing it as long as you guys are going to watch it, comment, and uh, um, ask me questions. I'll give you one more quick part of my life that happened back in eighth grade. Um, me and a buddy, we were making uh, fish spears down in um, wood shop, and another buddy was standing behind us, and I was making the points on a grinder. Well, I should have had the grinder set at probably like an eighth inch away from the wheel, well, I didn't. It was probably a half inch away. And as I'm filing down, making a point on my, um, my rods for my spearhead, my buddy behind me is talking. I turn around to talk to him, and my ring finger right here on the left hand got sucked right down into the grinder. Um, blood squirted all over my buddy behind me. Tip of my finger, was hanging right off my hand. They couldn't even stitch it on. They put it up, they wrapped it up, they did one stitch, trying to keep it together and stuff. And uh, just eventually, the meat and the skin and everything grew back. But if you look at this, that's what my nail looks like now on my finger and stuff. It's uglier than a mother. You know, it's, and it's gonna be, it's messed up all my life and stuff. And right out here, I gotta trim it all the time because they call it the claw, my friends do, because it, the fingernail starts growing out on an angle that way, and it gets caught in everything, and it hurts like hell. 
So anybody that's going to make a fish spear, um, I'd suggest that you put some safety goggles on, which I probably didn't have on either. Um, I wasn't supervised. I wasn't using uh, um, the grinder right. I just, I didn't do anything right. I'm lucky I didn't lose my finger. I'm lucky I didn't lose half my finger. But um, that's just part of what I got going on here. And uh, that's four little bits today. We'll see how things turn out. I'll go and I'll load this video now. And like I said, comment, like, subscribe, ask questions, and we'll keep story time with Gonzo going. I'll answer questions. I'll answer comments. But all the questions I ask are going to be on videos, and I'll bring your name up and stuff. So uh, until next time, peace, Chucky.